Okay, we're starting part two of this uh, project video for chapter seven. <clears throat> Number 14 says, go to the client investment tracker worksheet, which Elena asked you to finish. The worksheet shows sample data for a fictional client to illustrate the type of information Valentine Investments provides to its clients. All right. So Elena inserted the data in the range A20 through C28 as a link to another worksheet. So she copied it from another worksheet, and as she copied it, she used the create link feature. Now, if you're not aware, when we say create a link, that means that if we have linked data, whenever that data in that particular workbook gets updated, our worksheet or workbook that's reading that data will ask us, do you want to update based on changes made by someone else? This is where we're tying together, like potentially different offices or different people working together using linked data between workbooks. All right. So it says in cell B29, and what they mean here is um, using the quick analysis tool. So I'm going to select B21 through B28, that range. This is just a fancy way of doing sum, to be honest with you. So we select the range B21 to B28. Quick analysis tool is right here, this little button down here. I told you this was going to be a cleanup load. We did the practice exam for this chapter. It says, oh, you want to do a total, quick analysis total. I want to do a sum. And that's pretty much all it is. And, of course, I just put in a sum command down there for my data. All right. Use a quick analysis tool to create a conditional formatting rule. So here I'm going to select F21 through F28. All right. And it says formatting. And, oh, you want to do conditional formatting? And there's the different options up here. We're going to say data bars. And I think it automatically defaulted to solid fill blue data bars. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's just check it. I just want to make sure. Notice how the negative is red. That's interesting. Manage rules. Edit. Um, let's see here. Data bar. Did it use... That looks like solid blue fill to me, right? Solid blue fill data bars. Okay, I'll just go with it. That looks fine. Done. Boom. All right. Uh, break the link. So up here, I'm just going to click somewhere in that data. And under data, I'm going to say, hold on a second here. i got to think about here. Uh... Hold on here. Time out. I had to think about where my links is located. That's under data and under edit links. And here I'm going to say rather than depend on that information that's out there, I'm going to break the link, use what I currently have, and I'm not worried about somebody else updating that later, later on. Maybe it's an old file I've brought information from. But when I say break the link... It's going to stop reading the information from that external file. And now what I have in this particular worksheet is a standalone. Click close. Okay. On to number 15. Long project, huh? but lots of different stuff. Uh, Lena wants to show the total amount invested compared to the total value during the eight months of investment. Insert a chart in the client investment tracker worksheet as follows to show this information. Based on the non-adjacent data... So we're going to select A20 through A28 and hold down our control key, C20 through C28, non-adjacent data. We're holding down the control key and selecting two different ranges. Insert the first chart. So we're going to say insert recommended charts, which the first one they select is a, wait a second, timeout. Into the first type of chart that XLR recommends, which is a clustered column line chart. But why does that say scatter? Mm, scatter chart. Do you see that? Do you see what I'm looking at? Stacked area line. That is not a clustered column line chart. That's a scatter chart. I don't believe them. Clustered column. Okay, I'm going to have to go search for this one. Timeout. OK, 
Okay, they were kind of lying in their instructions. I need to go down here to a combo chart, which is two charts in one. I'm going to say clustered column line chart. That was not the first chart they recommended because they said it was a scatter. And it's not letting me use that. Hmm, okay, time out again. And I see the error in my ways in that I needed to select another data range, which was a D20 through D28. I'll read the instructions. Yes, I will. Okay, insert recommended charts. And now it's going to give me that clustered column line chart. There we go. All right, and I think I'm following direction, directions now. Okay, click OK. And there's my chart. Okay, I did it. I was not following directions. Sorry about that. That's why I was getting off. Okay, move and resize the chart so that the upper left-hand corner is in cell A5. I just get my black crosshair up there. Upper left is in cell A5. And lower right is in F19. Let's scroll down. Move over, resize to F. I'm just going to land that right in F19. And I might be a little high there. I'm going to just drag down just a little bit, make sure I'm in cell A5 through F19. Remove the chart title because the legend indicates the data clearly. I can just click on an edge here and just hit delete to get rid of my chart title, like so. All right, 16. Lena wants to make sure that people reviewing the worksheet understand that it displays sample data. Add a shape to the worksheet as follows to provide this information in cell E30. Well, we're doing some random stuff here. Isn't this interesting? In cell E30, it says insert a callout line shape from the callout section. Insert illustrations, shapes from the callouts section. Scroll down, callouts. Okay, call out line. I'm not going to make you watch me. Okay, let's try that again. And I'm just kind of doing this project, cold turkey, for the most part. Uh, call out line. Call out line. All right, from the call out section of the shapes gallery. Okay, click OK. I'm going to insert that into E30. And it says, take the call-out line. Move the call-out line so it points to the bottom of the total invested column. So here I'm going to grab that guy. To the bottom of the total invested column. Maybe like so. Yeah. Okay. And in my shape, click in the shape. I'm going to say sample data only. All right. I'm going to click off and then just enter that data. Click on my shape again. And we are going to put in a shape style of subtle effect turquoise accent one. Subtle effect colored fill. Subtle effect turquoise, turquoise accent one. See, time, that time I went fishing and it didn't take me long to find the shape style that I'm looking for for my sample data only. Number 17, home stretch. Elena wants to format the column chart in the range G20, that's over here, through M33 to call attention to it. She also wants to change the layout of the chart so that it provides another way to compare the total amount by month. Uh, by the ch chart as follows. Switch the rows and columns so that the chart compares the total values and the total invested by months 1 through 8. So instead of doing total value and total invested, we're going to do it by month. So we're going to say right click, select data. And here again, we're switching our axis, our horizontal and vertical axes. We're switching how the data is organized. So here I'm going to say switch columns and rows. So now it's going to be by month rather than type. Months one through eight. Nice. Okay. Apply the ice blue background to shape fill color to the plot area of the chart. Oh, okay. All right. So we're going to do shape fill. So here's our plot area. I've got my handles around my plot area where my chart actually exists. Okay. Apply the shape fill 
ice blue background too. What in the heck is that? He flew with ice blue background too. Ice blue background too. Ooh, that was a luck shot. Okay, so we're going to apply that as a background. And then for shape effect, in the um, shadow gallery, the outer section, offset bottom right. Where is that at? Offset bottom, offset bottom left, offset right, offset center, <laughs> offset left, offset top right. course it's the first one I could have selected you probably have looked at me wondering Reardon it's over there okay offset bottom right shape effect in the outer section the gallery oh to the legend holy schmoly hold on here let's undo that that wasn't to the plot area all right click down on your legend then we're gonna do shape effect right to the shadow outer offset bottom right shadow gallery to the legend i'm not really exactly sure that's that's kind of 3d now it looks kind of awesome all right that's messing around with our chart on 17 and we're on to number 18 last one long project again elena wants to add one more element of visual interest on the worksheet as if we don't have enough already yes insert an online picture using investments as the search text it's like the first picture in the search results and where are we putting this? We're going to put this in K13. This should be really interesting. Are you ready? Okay. K13. That's where I'm at. That's K12. K13. Okay. Insert illustrations, online pictures. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now it's going to take me out to the web. It's going to say, well, where do you want to pull your pictures from? Please wait while we load pictures time out here a second and it says go out and find investments Ooh, investments and enter and it says grab the first picture that comes up and this could be anything by the way you may have something different than me I'm gonna select that picture and insert it and there you go I don't know what I ended up with Ooh, that's interesting Upper left hand corner is in G1. Again, I can hit my arrow keys for fine alignment here. Okay, G1. Bottom right hand corner is in K13. Uh, so I'm going to click on my bottom resize handle. Whoa, weird. And undo that one. What is that all about? Oh, that was weird. Let's click off somewhere back on my picture I think I had multiple things selected there okay bottom right is going into K13 and here I can hit my left arrow key whoops I'm moving the whole thing sorry about that move it over to K13 move it over to K13 does it want to go to K13 there we go bottom right is in K13 like so let me move that over just a teeny bit, which is kind of resizing. Upper left is still in G1, correct? G1 through K13. Check me on that. That looks pretty good. Move the copyright text box below the picture in row 14. Okay, that's down here. And move it up to 14, like so. Okay, that's in place. Standing in right in the middle of row 14. Okay, well, we did a lot with graphics, we did a lot with charts, we bought data in from other worksheets, we used concatenate to do some editing on a table. Um, performance summary was the one that we copy and pasted, right, using uh, transpose, we did that as well. I'm going to go to the first worksheet in the list here, and go up to the top, and let's save this. Like I said, we did a lot of stuff there. Let's go back to, not my email. Let's go back to You have to see my email titles up there. Wasn't that fun? I'll just pause. 
Okay, let's see how we did. Continue. Let's go to our submission screen here. Let's go to our file. And, you know, I've warned you before that <clears throat> I'm doing these videos almost like they're live. And I hope that isn't throwing you off, but uh, here we go. And there's my Chapter 7 project in my documents file with a 2 on the end. Okay, don't forget to do those two steps. Save your documents file with a 2 on the end. Submit. And there's my green arrows, and how did I do? I hope I got 100%. I really was very careful about placing that stuff around. And I'm not going to get too fine here and try to show you the 100% answer if I don't get a perfect score here. Just be patient with me. Okay. And what's my score? And here it comes. There's my original project. And here it comes. I think that project took me close to an hour. Did it take you quite a while to do that? Again, this will really prepare you for the certification exam as I wait for my file to open. My computer's almost like dial-up. I got 97 out of 100. Let's see where I might have messed up. The asset management worksheet columns A through G should be resized. Wait a second. What? Number five. What did they ask me to resize? Oh, so that was uh, 5F. Resize columns A to D. I just must, must, must have missed that after the right function. Resize columns E through F to 7 and size column G to 21. I neglected to do that. They nicked me one point. Where else did they get me? The asset management worksheet, the text box in cell B37 should be resized to show the entire caption and be centered below the picture in the range B37 through C38. And you watch me do that, so I'm wondering if they wanted me to actually center that text in the text box. Again, I'm not going to mess around with this right now. I'm really happy with the 97. This one was just a silly error that I skipped over as far as resizing the columns. This one here is, I could probably go back and forth three times and really bore you, and I'm just going to call it good. All right, that is the end of project chapter seven. You know what you might want to do is go back and do the practice exam again for chapter seven and then um, start heading into preparation. Be pounding the G-Metrics work, by the way. If you haven't been doing the G-Metrics work and this is like online learning or distance learning or whatever, that's going to really help you with final preparation for the exam in addition to these projects. So I just want to encourage you to be working in G-Metrics, Skill Reviews 1 and 2. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.